listeners, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing something a bit different. Have you ever heard of Shark Week? This is a big deal in the United States, but if you haven't heard of it, let me introduce you. Shark Week is an annual week-long TV programming block at the Discovery Channel which features shark-based programming. Shark Week originally premiered on July 17, 1988 and has been going strong ever since. Featured annually in July or early August, it was originally devoted to conservation efforts and correcting misconceptions about sharks. Over time, it grew in popularity, and it became a hit on the Discovery Channel. Since 2010, it has been the longest-running cable television program event in history. It's promoted heavily via social networks like Facebook and Twitter, and has been trending on Google for a while. Today is the first day of Shark Week and, following its name, it runs for a full week. So I was thinking, why not go through the Wikipedia page of sharks and learn a little bit in a short amount of time. Ready? Go! Sharks are a group of elasmobranch fish characterized by a cartilaginous skeleton, five to seven gill slits on the sides of the head, and pectoral fins that are not fused to the head. Modern sharks are classified within the clad Selachimorpha, or Selachi, and are the sister group to the rays. However, the term shark has also been incorrectly used to refer to extinct members of the subclass Elasmobranchi, which are technically outside of the Selachimorpha clade. Under this broader definition, the earliest known sharks date back to more than 420 million years ago. Acanthodians are often referred to as spiny sharks, though they are not part of chondrichthys proper. Since then, sharks have diversified into over 500 species. They range in size from the small dwarf lantern shark, a deep sea species that is only 17 centimeters in length, to the whale shark, the largest fish in the world, which reaches approximately 12 to 2,000 meters. They generally do not live in fresh water, although there are a few known exceptions, such as the bull shark and the river shark, which can be found in both seawater and fresh water. Sharks have a covering of dermal denticles that protects their skin from damage and parasites in addition to improving their fluid dynamics. They have numerous sets of replaceable teeth. Several species are apex predators, which are organisms that are at the top of their food chain. Select examples include the tiger shark, blue shark, great white shark, mako shark, thresher shark, and hammerhead shark. Sharks are caught by humans for shark meat or shark fin soup. Many shark populations are threatened by human activities. Since 1970, shark populations have been reduced by 71%, mostly from overfishing. Teeth Shark teeth are embedded in the gums rather than directly affixed to the jaw and are constantly replaced throughout life. Multiple rows of replacement teeth grow in a groove on the side of the jaw and steadily move forward in comparison to a conveyor belt. Some sharks lose 30,000 or more teeth in their lifetime. The rate of tooth replacement varies from once every 8 to 10 days to several months. In most species, teeth are replaced one at a time as opposed to the simultaneous replacement of an entire row, which is observed in the cookie cutter shark. Tooth shape depends on the shark's diet. Those that feed on mollusks and crustaceans have dense and flattened teeth used for crushing. Those that feed on fish have needle-like teeth for gripping. And those that feed on larger prey, such as mammals, have pointed lower teeth for gripping and triangular upper teeth with serrated edges for cutting. The teeth of plankton feeders, such as the basking shark, are small and non-functional. Skeleton Shark skeletons are very different from those of bony fish and terrestrial vertebrates. Sharks and other cartilaginous fish, like skates and rays, have skeletons made of cartilage and connective tissue. Cartilage is flexible and durable, yet is about half the normal density of bone. This reduces the skeleton's weight, saving energy. Because sharks do not have rib cages, they can easily be crushed under their own weight on land. Jaw The jaws of sharks, like those of rays and skates, are not attached to the cranium. The jaw's surface, in comparison to the shark's vertebrae and gill arches, needs extra support due to its heavy exposure to the physical stress and its need for strength. 
It has a layer of tiny hexagonal plates called tesserae, which are crystal blocks of calcium salts arranged as a mosaic. This gives these areas much of the same strength found in the bony tissue found in other animals. Generally, sharks have only one layer of tesserae, but the jaws of large specimens, such as the bull shark, tiger shark, and the great white shark, have two to three layers or more, depending on body size. The jaws of a large great white shark may have up to five layers. In the rostrum, or snout, the cartilage can be spongy and flexible to absorb the power of impacts. Physiology Unlike bony fish, Sharks do not have gas-filled swim bladders for buoyancy. Instead, sharks rely on a large liver filled with oil that contains squalene and their cartilage, which is about half the normal density of bone. Their liver constitutes up to 30% of their total body mass. The liver's effectiveness is limited, so sharks employ dynamic lift to maintain depth while swimming. Sand tiger sharks store air in their stomachs, using it as a form of swim bladder. Bottom-dwelling sharks, like the nurse shark, have negative buoyancy, allowing them to rest on the ocean floor. Some sharks, if inverted or stroked on the nose, enter a natural state of tonic immobility. Researchers use this condition to handle sharks safely. Respiration like other fish, sharks extract oxygen from seawater as it passes over their gills. Unlike other fish, shark gill slits are not covered, but lie in a row behind the head. A modified slit called a spiracle lies just behind the eye, which assists the shark with taking in water during respiration and plays a major role in bottom-dwelling sharks. Thermoregulation most sharks are cold-blooded, or more precisely, poikilothermic, meaning that their internal body temperature matches that of their ambient environment. Members of the family Lamnidae are homeothermic and maintain a higher body temperature than the surrounding water. In these sharks, a strip of aerobic red muscle located near the center of the body generates the heat which the body retains via a countercurrent exchange mechanism by a system of blood vessels called the Ridi Mirabile, miraculous net. The common thresher and big-eye thresher sharks have a similar mechanism for maintaining an elevated body temperature. Fluorescence A few sharks appear fluorescent under blue light, such as the swell shark and the chain cat shark, where the fluorophore derives from a metabolite of kynurenic acid. Intelligence Sharks possess brain-to-body mass ratios that are similar to mammals and birds, and have exhibited apparent curiosity and behavior resembling play in the wild. There is evidence that juvenile lemon sharks can use observational learning in their investigation of novel objects in their environment. Threats to shark in 2008, it was estimated that nearly 100 million sharks were being killed by people every year due to the commercial and recreational fishing. Shark finning yields are estimated at 1.44 million metric tons for 2000 and 1.41 million metric tons for 2010. Based on an analysis of average shark weights, this translates into a total annual mortality estimate of about 100 million sharks in 2000 and about 97 million sharks in 2010, with a total range of possible values between 63 and 273 million sharks per year. Sharks are a common seafood in many places, including Japan and Australia. In the Australian state of Victoria, shark is the most commonly used fish in fish and chips, in which fillets are battered and deep fried or crumbed and grilled. In fish and chip shops, shark is called flake. In India, small sharks or baby sharks are sold in local markets. Since the flesh is not developed, cooking the flesh breaks it into powder, which is then fried in oil and spices. The soft bones can be easily chewed. They are considered a delicacy in coastal Tamil Nadu. Icelanders ferment Greenland sharks to produce a delicacy called hakarl. During a four-year period from 1996 to 2000, 
an estimated 26 to 73 million sharks were killed and traded annually in commercial markets. Sharks are often killed for shark fin soup. Fishermen capture live sharks, fin them, and dump the finless animal back into the water. Shark finning involves removing the fin with a hot metal blade. The resulting immobile shark soon dies from suffocation or predators. Shark fin has become a major trade within black markets all over the world. Fins sell for about 300 pounds in 2009. Poachers illegally fin millions each year. Few governments enforce laws that protect them. In 2010, Hawaii became the first U.S. state to prohibit the possession, sale, trade, or distribution of shark fins. From 1996 to 2000, an estimated 38 million sharks had been killed per year for harvesting shark fins. It is estimated by traffic that over 14,000 tons of shark fins were exported into Singapore between 2005 and 2007, and 2012 and 2014. Shark fin soup is a status symbol in Asian countries and is erroneously considered healthy and full of nutrients. Scientific research has revealed, however, that high concentrations of BMAA are present in shark fins. Because BMAA is a neurotoxin, consumption of shark fin soup and cartilage pills, therefore, may pose a health risk. BMAA is under study for its pathological role in neurodegenerative diseases such as ALS, Alzheimer's disease, and Parkinson's disease. Sharks are also killed for meat. European diners consume dogfishes, smooth hounds, cat sharks, muckos, poor beagle, and also skates and rays. However, the US FDA lists sharks as one of four fish, with swordfish, king mackerel, and tilefish, whose high mercury content is hazardous to children and pregnant women. Sharks reach sexual maturity only after many years and produce few offspring in comparison to other harvested fish. Harvesting sharks before they reproduce severely impacts future populations. Capture-induced premature birth and abortion, collectively called capture-induced parturition, occurs frequently in sharks and rays when fished. Capture-induced parturition is rarely considered in fisheries management despite being shown to occur in at least 12% of live-bearing sharks and rays, 88 species to date. The majority of shark fisheries have little monitoring or management. The rise in demand for shark products increases pressure on fisheries. Major declines in shark stocks have been recorded. Some species have been depleted by over 90% over the past 20-30 to 30 years, with population declines of 70% not unusual. A study by the International Union for Conservation of Nature suggests that one quarter of all known species of sharks and rays are threatened by extinction, and 25% were classified as critically endangered. In 2014, a shark cull in Western Australia killed dozens of sharks, mostly tiger sharks, using drumlines until it was cancelled after public protests and a decision by the Western Australia EPA from 2014 to 2017. There was an imminent threat policy in Western Australia in which sharks that threatened humans in the ocean were shot and killed. This imminent threat policy was criticized by Senator Rachel Seward for killing endangered sharks. The imminent threat policy was cancelled in March 2017, and in August 2018, the Western Australia government announced a plan to reintroduce drumlines, though this time, the drumlines are smart drumlines. From 1962 to the present, the government of Queensland has targeted and killed sharks in large numbers by using drumlines, under a shark control program. This program has also inadvertently killed large numbers of other animals, such as dolphins, and endangered hammerhead sharks. Queensland's drumline program has been called outdated, cruel, and ineffective. From 2001 to 2018, a total of 10,480 sharks were killed on lethal drumlines in Queensland, including in the Great Barrier Reef. From 1962 to 2018, roughly 50,000 sharks were killed by Queensland authorities. The government of New South Wales has a program that deliberately kills sharks using nets. The current net program in New South Wales has been described as being extremely destructive to marine life, including sharks. Between 1950 and 2008, 
352 tiger sharks and 577 great white sharks were killed in the nets in New South Wales. Also during this period, a total of 15,135 marine animals were killed in the nets, including dolphins, whales, turtles, dugongs, and critically endangered grey nurse sharks. There has been a very large decrease in the number of sharks in eastern Australia, and the shark killing programs in Queensland and New South Wales are partly responsible for this decrease. KwaZulu-Natal, an area of South Africa, has a shark killing program using nets and drumlines. These nets and drumlines have killed turtles and dolphins and have been criticized for killing wildlife. During a 30-year period, more than 33,000 sharks have been killed in KwaZulu-Natal's shark killing program. During the same 30-year period, 2,211 turtles, 8,448 rays, and 2,300 dolphins were killed. Authorities on the French island of Réunion kill about 100 sharks per year. Killing sharks negatively affects the marine ecosystem. Jessica Morris of Humane Society International calls shark culling a knee-jerk reaction and says sharks are top-order predators that play an important role in the functioning of marine ecosystems. We need them for healthy oceans. George H. Burgess, the former director of the International Shark Attack File, describes shark culling as a form of revenge, satisfying a public demand for blood and little else. He also said shark calling is a retro-type move reminiscent of what people would have done in the 1940s and 50s, back when we didn't have an ecological conscience and before we knew the consequences of our actions. Jane Williamson, an associate professor in marine ecology at Macquarie University, says, There is no specific support for the concept that culling sharks in a particular area will lead to a decrease in shark attacks and increase ocean safety. Other threats include habitat alteration, damage and loss from coastal development, pollution and the impact of fisheries on the seabed and prey species. All right, thank you for joining me for the Shark Week speed run. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, drop a comment, and subscribe. We put out new videos weekly. Thank you so much and have a great night.